Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. There is nothing so powerful as the truth, and very often nothing so strange. The truth. There are those who pursue it and those who seek to escape it, those who accept it and those who deny it, those who preserve it and those who distort it. But whether we are at war with it or at peace with it, blissfully unconscious or uneasily aware of it, The truth is always the central fact of our lives. Give him back the money. But it's my money. Don't touch it. But I want it. Legit, Gussie. Don't you understand, Bones? He wants something from you. Ah, what could he want from me? He could want your soul. My soul? Why? What would he do with it? Don't ask me. Ask him. He's the devil. mystery drama, Transmutations Incorporated, was written especially for the mystery theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Greyhound Package Express and x I'll be back shortly with Act One. The ancient beliefs, the old superstitions, are they still with us? Our ancestors knew nothing So they feared everything. As for us, civilized, sophisticated, modern us, we know everything. Therefore, it follows that we should fear nothing. Let us introduce you to Bones Terwilliger. Mr. Terwilliger is even now on his yacht, a waterborne palace. He can also afford a palazzo in Italy, a castle in Spain, horses, custom-made cars. Indeed, If some of his old friends could only see him now, but they don't. As Mrs. Bones Terwilliger, the former Augusta Schultz, puts it... Stuyvesant no longer mingles with the riffraff, thank you. Stuyvesant. Well, what are you going to do? Makes her happy to call me that. After all, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have had none of this. You see, Gussie, uh, I can't even call her Gussie anymore. It's Augusta now. Well, she went back to her hometown because her uncle died and left her this diner. I kept writing her to come back to New York, and she kept writing me to come to this place, Rogersville. So finally, I drove down there. I refuse to pander to drunks in a saloon. What do you mean, panda? All you do is check hats and coats and sell cigarettes. I find the atmosphere degrading. But, Gussie, Joe says you'll double your salary. He'll even let you keep 10% of your tips. The answer is negative. But, Gussie... If you call me Gussie one more time, I shall bust a plate over your head. My name is Augusta. What are we arguing about? Now, come on back. No. Have you breathed the air here in Rogersville? No smoke, no fumes, no pollution. It almost kills me. And everyone is so friendly. Oh, Stuyvesant, darling, settle down here. Here? What are you, crazy? What would I do here? A man of your talents. You could find something. Look, I got information for you. I knew this might be coming, so I cased the town. I figured I could run a dice game. No takers. I can't even get a card game going. Stuyvesant. It gets worse. I can't even book any bets. Look, I was having reference to uh, a legitimate activity. You could help me run the diner. Me? <laughs> Slide them off the arm in a grease joint? We could even get married. Married? Yes, married. What? 
What are you trying to do, ruin our relationship? In other words, you do not love me anymore. Oh, no, 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 baby, baby. I love you more than ever. Oh, and I love you. Look, for ten years, we've been happy to where we are. How do we know... I we... have spoken my last and final words on the subject. But, Garcia, uh, Gar you can't just... Uh, hey. Huh? Who's that? What's the matter with him? Oh, who knows? Some bum... <laughs> He's been sitting at that table all night. That guy looks sick. Hey, hey buddy, you okay? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm quite improved now. Uh, I mean, ever since you came in. What do you mean? Well, you see, you're one of my people. Oh, yeah? Which people? Look, mister, I'm about to close for the evening, so if you'll just pay your check. Hey, the check. Uh, how much is it? Oh, let me see. You had the... Uh, oh, $1.97. Uh, pay it for me, will you, Stuyvesant? Why should he pay it? You see how she worries about your money? Ah. Can you imagine what she'll be like after the wedding? And it's only a dollar ninety-seven. Uh, we won't tip her more than fifteen percent, so give her uh, a two twenty-eight. But why should he give me them? Because I don't have it. Oh, you don't have it. That's what I said the first time. You mean you came in here and consumed almost two dollars worth of food, and you knew you had no money in your pocket? Why? I was hungry. Uh, look, honey, honey, w what's the problem? The guy don't have any money. Here, let me get the tab, huh? Uh, you know him? No, I don't know him. Well, then why did he say you were one of his people? It was a metaphorical way of saying... Oh, come on, Gussie, don't make a federal case out... L let me give you the money. There's a principle. But he don't have any money. Then let him work. Work? Yeah, he can wash dishes for an hour. I can't. I'm uh, allergic to soap. Well, the... I'll call the sheriff. For a dollar ninety-seven? For a principal. Here's the money. Look, you you don't understand. I understand what? The work ethic. If you pay his check, I I never want to see you again. Okay, Gussie. Uh, and don't call me Gussie. And if you don't leave me pay that check, I never want to see you again. Oh, you you insist. I insist. Goodbye, Stuyvesant. Hey, hey, hey there, wait for me. Uh, uh, where are you going? Back home. <laughs> How about a ride, huh? Uh, all right, get in. Uh, don't worry about her. Yeah? She doesn't mean it. You don't know Gussie. I know her better than you do. What are you talking about? <laughs> you see, I know everybody better than you do. I even know you better than you do, Bones. I know my name is Bones. I told you. I know you. What's your name? Apple. Apple what? Just Apple. Where'd you get that name? It's uh, symbolic. Of what? The Garden of Eden. You look like a hustler to me. I am. I am the king of the hustlers. Yeah, is that a fact? Yeah, an accepted fact throughout the world. Accepted by who? Everybody. Even you. Me? Do you accept the fact that the devil is the king of the hustlers? You are I the... happen to be the devil. The what? The devil. Mephistopheles, Satan. You mean you're Saint Nick? <laughs> no, no. Saint Nick is Santa Claus. I'm old Nick. Oh, yeah, well, uh... What are you expecting? A puff of smoke? Ah... Uh... Okay, live and let live to each their own. I got my hustle, you got your hustle. You still don't believe that I'm the devil. All right, let me prove it. Uh, what do you want? What do I want? Yeah, name it. Okay. I want to be a millionaire. I want yachts, horses, the works. You have got it. I what? I said you've got it. Well, where have I got it? <laughs> you don't believe me. You didn't even have a dollar ninety-seven to buy your way out of a hash joint. That's true. You know, there are times when I can snap my fingers and come up with millions. And there are times when I can't even raise a dollar ninety-seven. That's what being the devil means. Yeah, that's the hell of it. <laughs> uh, okay, let it pass. No, 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 I insist. You'll get your money. Sure, sure, sure. About my temporary embarrassment just before... Uh, yeah. Uh, you see, it had to do with the town, Rogersburg... Rogersville. The place we just left. Yeah. It's bad for me. They don't believe in me there. You're trying to tell me those people don't believe there's a devil? Oh, they believe I exist. But they don't believe, I don't know, in me. Nobody robs, lies, gambles, cheats on his wife. 
And you know what happens to me in a town like that? I fall apart. There's nothing to sustain me. Look, why don't we just let it go? When huh? people no longer believe in a god, do you know what happens to him or her? Well, he she... or she just fades away. Oh, I've seen them come and go in my time. A couple of thousand years ago, there was this um, Zeus. I tell you, it was it. And Juno and Apollo. And up north, they had this Odin. You know, down in Mexico, they had somebody called Texcatlipoca. Where are they all today? Ask me. Okay, where? Nowhere. You see, Bones, just as the gods sustain the people, the people have to support the gods. People are always asking the gods, whichever ones are ruling the roost at the time, for life. But the people have to give life to the gods, too. There's nothing as pathetic as a god who has been cast aside, who nobody believes in anymore. Oh, yeah. It's enough to make even the devil weep. <laughs> Brother Apple, you got a good line in this devil hustle. Do you make a buck out of it? I thought I got a bad deal when I got kicked out of heaven, but it was the greatest thing that ever happened. I am more popular today than ever, except here and there in little places like Rogersburg. Now, Rogersville. You saved me. Me? That dame, that Gussie. She is so good. I almost dissolved and sank between the floorboards. And then, and then you walked in, one of my own people. You know what? I drew strength from you. Now, look. Just what is your hustle, anyhow? And now, now you are going to get to be a millionaire. Give me the dollar ninety-seven plus a thirty-one cent tip, and we'll call it square. Oh, Bones, you don't believe me, do you? Now, there's got to be a payoff. Rogersville, Rogersville. Why is the name familiar? It's named after this, um, who is it, E.B. Rogers the Third, but he doesn't live there. Uh, you heard of him, Bones? Oh, yeah, yeah. They say he's the third or fourth richest guy in the country. Yeah, that's right. His grandfather started the family fortune right around here somewhere. Rogers, E.B. Rogers the Third. Let's go see him, Bones. What for? What for? <laughs> what for? Why, he is going to make you a millionaire. That's what's for. Well, the man says it with a straight face. And you must admit, he's got a most convincing tone in his voice. Supreme confidence in his manner. But we're talking about millions, aren't we? All right. We'll pause just a few minutes, and then Mr. Apple will simply have to put his money where his mouth is. Speak the truth and shame the devil? Not really. Certainly not always. Sometimes it seems that the truth is so destructive that it must be the devil's very own music. Well, all that has to do with theory. The basic fact is that when you've got a tiger or a devil by the tail, you'd better not let go. Mr. Bones Terwilliger isn't quite sure what he's got. Well, we finally hit New York City late the next morning. This Apple character and all that talk about him being a devil is beginning to make me nervous. I think I better dump him fast. So I say to him... Uh, where can I let you off? The Ritz Plaza. The Ritz Plaza? I used to stay at the Imperial, but I understand that the Ritz Plaza is the luxury hotel this year. Yeah, but you didn't even have a dollar ninety-seven to pay for your meal. I'll engage a suite there, and you will be my guest. Look, I mean, what are you? Aren't you to... interested in watching me make you a millionaire? Uh, about that, you don't have to. I mean, forget it. Oh no, I couldn't. But I don't really want to be a millionaire. But you do. I don't want to hold you to a promise you might have made when you weren't really thinking. Now, the difference between me and the other cards is that I always know what I'm doing. You see, they're concerned with being good. That's complicated. I'm involved with evil. That's simple. Now, I promise to make you a millionaire, and I'm going to do it. Yeah, but there I There's a principle involved, and it's bigger than both of us. Turn right and head east for Madison Avenue. What, this time of day, the traffic will never Don't make... worry about the traffic. It was originally my creation. Disregard it. Just turn right. Yeah, but it's all... Don't what? worry about it. The street was choked with traffic. You know how a street can be. Nothing was moving. 
But suddenly, it was like a plug being removed from a drain. Everything just started to flow, just like that. Old Apple slipped me a wink. Well, we pull up in front of Rich Plaza. Uh, just leave the car. The doorman will see to it. Yeah, but he... I don't have any money with me. That I know about. Give him a $5 bill. Hey. Make it 10 10 bucks. I want you to develop millionaire habits. Those guys don't tip so great. I am training you myself. You are going to be a millionaire of the old school. Give him the 10 That's it. Uh, my man, we will need the car this evening. Come, Bones, let us engage the presidential suite. Do you realize this place costs $500 a day? <laughs> it's worth every penny. Would you look at that view? Yeah, but... Uh, Have you, a glass uh, of champagne and this. Mm, this is the most delicious caviar. They put that on the bill. That's another 55 bucks. Now, look, we're getting in deep here. Why are you so nervous? I am close to 600 bucks into this caper, and I don't even know what it is. Uh, how much cash do you have? Uh-oh, here it comes. How much? Uh, $67.48. Plus a subway token. Well, obviously we require some walking around money. Well, you claim you're the devil? Snap your fingers. No, no. That is not how I raise money. Now, let's see. Where's the newspaper? Oh, yeah. Thank you. And the entries for today's races. Oh, boy. Here we are. Aha. Uh -huh. Dreamy Dolores in the first at Atlantic Park. What are you, nuts? She's 20 to 1. Bet $100. You can't bet $100 on a maiden filly. Why did I say 100 Make it 1000 But I don't have 1000 You didn't have 100 either. You don't know the first thing about horse racing. You must be joking. I invented horse racing. But Dreamy Dolores, I never heard of her. Now, who is your bookmaker? Crush at Lexington. Call him. Oh, no. I'll call him. Now, uh, look, uh, uh, we, we can't bet a thousand dollars. Why not? Why not? It's a sucker bet. Only suckers bet on long shot fillies. Uh, hello, Crasher. I'm calling for Bones to Williger. Yes. A thousand bucks on Dreamy Dolores in the first at Atlantic Park. To win, naturally. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Crusher. What did you do? What did you just do to me? I have just put $20,000 into your pocket. Yeah, well, what? What if that horse loses? She can't lose. Crusher Lexington is seven feet tall. He weighs 300 pounds. Five minutes after that horse loses, he's going to be here to collect his thousand bucks. Where am I going to get a Gino? Dreamy Dolores cannot lose. The race is fixed. Fixed? <laughs> How do you know? I fixed it myself. When? Just now. Do you realize that in one minute they're off at Atlantic Park for the first race and I don't have a thousand dollars to pay off if I lose? You know, you are the most negative person I ever met. No, 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 no. It ends. It ends here. Now, the hustle, whatever it is, it's over. Fini, done, through. First, I call up Crush Lexington and call off that bet. It's too late. Turn on the radio. They're at the gate. No, no. Shh, listen. The first race at Atlantic. And they're off. Oh, I'm gone, I'm gone. And it's Merry Mary, first followed by Pretty Polly and Lazy Lily, Suey Sally and Happy Helen. Where's Dreamy Dolores? At the turn, it's still Merry Mary and Pretty Polly. Where's Dreamy Dolores? Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, who's making a great move up from the rear to challenge the leaders? Dreamy Dolores? Ginny Gertrude, she's now taking the lead. You said it was fixed. It's fixed. And coming into the stretch, they're neck and neck, nose to nose. Giddy Gertrude and Pretty Polly, less than 50 yards to go. It's Giddy Gertrude. Now it's Pretty Polly. Gertrude, Polly. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead. I should let you wash dishes. Relax, Bones. Relax and enjoy it. Please, please save me. Let her win, please. Oh, she'll win. What did you do to me? I'm dead. I'm gone. I'll, I'll give anything, anything. That is what I was waiting for. You have got a deal. Down to the wire. It's Polly. No, no, it's Gertrude. And the winner is Dreamy Dolores. Dreamy Dolores? Where did she come from? <laughs> I told you. It was fixed. She... She won. Dreamy... Dreamy Dolores won. <sighs> what do you say now, huh? What do I say? 
What do you expect me to say? That was the biggest fluke, the all-time craziest piece of luck that ever happened. That's what I mean. That's what the gods have to contend with. You prayed for Dreamy Dolores to win, and when your prayer was answered, are you grateful? Do you give credit where credit is due? I pray? You said, please, please save me. Let her win. I said that? You know you said it. It was just a manner of speaking. But thank God she came home. No, no, don't thank God. Thank me. God does not answer the prayers of horse players. I do. You'll never know what I had to go through. And on such short notice, the machinations, the permutations, the combinations... That's why I invented the computer. But I didn't have one handy, so I had to do it all in my head. Oh, well. Okay, now let me tell you something. It was a fix, and you were in on it. But the owner of that horse should never use that jock again. He cut it too close. So tell me, what's your cut? My cut? How much dough do you want? Not a penny. What do you mean? I am not in this for the money. Well, then... Why did you pass me this tip? I didn't just pass you a tip. I fixed the race. Okay, okay, okay. Have it your way. But why? What did you get out of it? I got you. Me? Didn't you yell, I'll give anything, anything? I, I just... I'll let I... you know what anything is at the proper time and in the right place. Okay. Okay. You say you're the devil. Yeah. And by now, you should believe it. Yeah, it's crazy, but I'd go along with a gag. Why do you want to do this for me? Because I take care of my people. If I don't, they won't stay with me. And I'll be tossed out on the cosmic ash heap of broken down, abandoned, has-been deities. Yeah, but why me? I said, you were one of my people. You keep saying that, but I'm not a bad person. I mean, I never really hurt nobody. Oh, Bones, you're the salt of my earth. You just got a little bit of larceny in your heart. That's what I like. Moderation. It's the real heavies, the big villains that give me a bad name. Now, leave us assume that you are the devil. Did, uh... Did I just sell you my soul? Now, why do you ask such a question? Why don't you answer it? Well, let's say that you have just given me a first mortgage. Listen to that. And listen to me. I got to say that you are the number one hustler of all time. For a minute, they even had me believing it. Yeah, and that minute was long enough. Now, look, you promised me I'd be a millionaire. Okay, I'll settle for the 20 grand. No, I must honor my commitment. Well, I was just thinking I that know I... what you were just thinking. Perhaps you wouldn't be as deeply in my debt, but $20, 20000 20 million, it's all the same. Is this how you're going to make me a millionaire? Through betting on the races? No, no. Horse racing is one of my more primitive inventions. A couple of hundred years ago, I came up with something much better. What was that? The stock market. Let's collect our 20000 and buy a portfolio of growth stocks. We did that exact thing. And then we took a ride down to Wall Street... I never seen Apple looking so chipper, so in the pink. And when I said so, he answers me. <laughs> this is my own, my native land, Bones. All these huge, shining buildings are temples to me. These nervous, clattering machines, they sing hymns to me. I should have known better than to say something. Anyhow... We wind up in a broker's office. We sit down across from a very frosty-looking dame. The sign on whose desk reads, Luella X. Margin. We have several extremely interesting growth situations. Of course, increased fluidity on the downside pressures may vary in maturation. I dare whole... say, Miss Margin, I dare say. Well, may I suggest an extremely undervalued, underpriced, solid, brilliantly managed company? No. No? No. I would prefer an overvalued, overpriced, flimsy, horribly mismanaged company. Oh, you... you can't be serious. But I am. But no one has ever asked me to... You see, to... Miss Margin, you try to find companies that are sleepers. I want one that's fast asleep. You uh, appreciate the considerable difference, I assume? Oh, yes, 
but I still... What do you have that sells for a penny a share? Well, I may have something for a dime. A penny, my dear Miss Margin. But there's a situation you can have for a nickel. A penny, or I shall take my business elsewhere. Well, this company, it's on the verge of bankruptcy. Its president and board of directors are all under indictment. Ah, yes, that sounds splendid. At $20,000 at a penny, uh, that would bring us uh, two million shares. Yes, but, sir, that would be like throwing your money to the devil. Oh, yes, that's true, Miss Margin. Well, then, <laughs> if you admit it... What's the difference, Miss Margin? In the end, he gets it all anyhow... Doesn't he? It's one thing to fix a race, assuming our friend Mr. Apple really did fix it, and quite another to fix an entire corporation. As we see it, there are several fundamental questions. Is Mr. Apple the devil? If Mr. Apple is not the devil, then who is he? And what is his angle? In Act 3, we'll either get the answer or we won't. They say he must have a long spoon who would eat with the devil. Not all devils. We have a devil here who is most obliging, cooperative, and accommodating. Butter would scarcely melt in his mouth. He's all give and no take, at least so far. And if he controls hell, then what must heaven be like? We've known him for more than half an hour by this time, and we can't fault him yet. So, the company is doing no business at all. It's flat broke. And the president and the board of directors face indictment for fraud. Oh, what a promising outlook. I should warn you, sir, that... Even at a penny a share, the risk is far too great. Bones, give the lady the $20,000 and we'll take two million shares. Give her the 20000 Without delay. Yeah, but these are real dollars. All she's going to give us is just pieces of paper. That's the way the market works. Paper for paper. Yeah, but you heard what she just said. The company's on its last legs. The money bones. Uh, what is the name of the stock, Miss Margin? Oh, Transmutation Incorporated. Uh huh. And what does it do? No one's ever been able to find out, which is why it's about to go out of business. That is why I strongly recommend that I you know, do I know, I know. You recommend that I don't buy it. However, please execute Mr. Terwilliger's order for two million shares. Bones the money. Look. I got 20 grand out of this caper. Caper? Whatever it is, I'm satisfied. I want to call it quits. Right here, right now. Oh, you do, Bones. Do you? Yeah. Really? <laughs> That's what I want to do. No, 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 no. Here's what you want to do. Now, you see this newspaper? You see the market page? You see where Transmutation Incorporated is listed? You see what it says? Transmutation Incorporated. Selling at one cent. Now, you want to watch this page every day. You want to see it go up. Up to a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars a share. Oh, you are one of my people, Bones, one of my people. But I already got twenty thousand. You've 20, already got what? Twenty thousand dollars? What's that? You don't live for money. You don't care about money. It's how it comes in. It's the thrill, the excitement of winning the bet. Seeing the horse make his move from back of the pack and drive to the finish. It's the exhilaration you get of lining up a sucker, feeding him the bait gently, smoothly, so he never even knows he's been hooked. The finesse with which you reel him in. Give her the money, Bones. Yeah, but if we buy this particular stock, we're the suckers. I seem to recall that you thought Dreamy Dolores was a sucker bet, too. All right, you can fix her race, but a whole company... Give her the money! But you... What is there to think about? After all, after all, you are one of my people, Bones. One of my people. That was the way he said it. One of my people. One of which people? Whose people? The devil's people? Was there such a person as the devil? But if he wasn't the devil, who was he? A con man? Oh, sure. Sure, he had all the patter, all the moves, all the angles. But what kind of con was it? And what was the payoff supposed to be? What was in it for him? 
What I wanted to do right now is talk it over with Gussie. Like I'd always talk everything over with Gussie. For a dame, Gussie had plenty of smarts. But she was back in Rogersville. Okay, so I could get on a plane and be in Rogersville in less than an hour. The money bones? Well, I uh, I have to talk it over with... I uh, understand. It could wait for tomorrow, can't it? The stock won't run away from us, uh, will it, Miss Margin? Oh, good heavens, no. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't we all meet here tomorrow at the same time? It's just that I never yet made a big move without discussing it with your certain party. Yes, and I know exactly what she's going to say. <laughs> No. But Gussie... And don't call me Gussie. Lose him. But why? Didn't you just tell me he's the devil? I could be wrong. No, no. This time you're right. He fixed that race. Yeah, well, that could have been an, an accident. accident. A coincidence? Oh, don't make me laugh. Then, uh... I shouldn't buy a stock, huh? Forget it. Maybe you're right. I'll just keep the 20 grand. No, you won't. You give it back. Give it back? Yeah, you just say, friend... Here's your 20000 And you just walk away. What are you saying? Did I say walk? No. Run. But why? Why? He's the devil. Ah, we're being superstitious. There's no such there thing. There is. There is. That's like a little fairy tale they tell the kids. Yeah? Well, you're going to look him square in the eye. You'll say, here's your twenty grand, minus the $2.28 I loaned you. So now, I don't owe you nothing. You don't owe me nothing. We're through. Quits. Finished. Goodbye. Yeah, but Gussie, it's 20 grand. It's your soul, Bones. Your soul. Oh, come on, Gussie. You know what the soul is? I looked it up in a dictionary. The immortal or the spiritual part of the person. So what does that mean? Whatever it means, he wants it. Well, what could he do with it? Don't let him have it. For 20 grand? Why not? Because after you die, you'll go to hell. After I die? What do I care where I go? I'll be dead. No, you won't be dead. How can you say so? If you have your soul, you won't be dead. Look, you'll bury me, won't you? Well, sure. Well, then soul or no soul, I'll be dead anyhow. But if you got your soul, you've got eternal life. A uh, fat lot of good, it'll do me in a grave. But you won't be in a grave. I won't? No. You mean if somebody was to dig it open, they wouldn't find me? You, yes. Your soul, no. Oh, give back his money. Because uh, it's not just this 20 thou. He says he wants to make me a millionaire. You ain't heard a word I said. You'll go to hell. Oh, you don't believe in all that, Gussie, do you? Them little devils with the pitchforks. That's not what hell is, Bones. It's whatever turns you off. It's tailor-made for each and every customer. Ah, you're nuts. What would be hell for you? Hmm, Bones? A uh, uh, steady, indoor, nine-to-five job, right? At a desk, using an adding machine, right? Just adding figures all day long. And so there you are, Bones, at the desk all day. I'll cut it out, and Gussie. And sitting there, just like you, 50 guys to the left, 50 more to the right, uh. 50 in front, 50 in back. All one-time hustlers, con guys, gamblers, all punching the adding machine. No, Gussie, no. Adding them figures all day. What figures? The devil's figures. Keeping a record of every deal the devil makes. Keeping all the numbers straight. Keeping everybody's account up to date. Like yours. Some poor slob has already made a record of your 20 grand. Gussie, you feel okay? And sometimes. Sometimes you just can't stand it no more. Poor bones, you just can't stand it. Your mind begins to wander. You you begin to daydream. Who's going to win the fifth at Aqueduct, huh? And suddenly, there's this noise. Like your whole head's on fire. You scream. Stop it! Stop it! And now he's there. You know who. You've done it again, Bones. Daydreaming. Please, please, please. I, I, I promise I'll behave. As punishment, you will work an hour longer today. Anything, anything. Just stop the pain. Another hour of sheer torture. Adding more and more numbers. Oh, please, Bones. Promise you'll give him back the 20. Promise? Yeah. Yeah. I promise. Here's what I owe you. 
Twenty grand minus two dollars and twenty-eight cents. I take it you are giving the money to Miss Margin here for the stock. Sure. You take it. I leave it. And you no longer desire to become a millionaire. I'm happy the way things are. I'm afraid you won't be happy anymore because, you see, you'll no longer be one of my people. That's great. Is it? Only my people can enjoy betting on horses, playing cards, trimming suckers, fleecing marks. You will never do any of those things again. Who's going to stop me? You will. You'll stop yourself. The desire for those things will disappear. The appetite will be gone. You'll become Mr. Stuyvesant Terwilliger, shaping up to a nine-to-five office job. At least I won't go to hell. Right? You'll go to heaven. And what'll you do there, Bones, huh? Do they have racetracks, casinos, con games? How will you pass the time? What'll you do for eternity? And who will you have for company? All the suckers, the marks, the squares. No, no. Yes, yes. All right. Buy the stock. Buy the stock. And now, Bones, soon we shall visit Mr. E.B. Rogers III and sell him the stock. First, we shall prepare the ground. Uh, Who who, who are you calling? The financial editor at the Daily Press. Uh, Hello? Uh, Mr. Squinterm, please. Yes, thank you. You see, you have to stir up the cauldron a bit, Bones, huh? Oh, hello there. Uh, I'm the same gentleman who tipped you off to amalgamated gold bar. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, You might investigate the recent activity in Transmutation Incorporated. Why were two million shares purchased? (laughs) Well, as I hear it, Transmutation has found a process that can transmute sewage into crude oil. Yes, that's right. Now, Bones, (laughs) watch it go up. And it did. Like we were hit by a blizzard. Everybody wanted to buy Transmutation Inc. And I had all the stock. And the price kept going up, up, up. We shall now visit Mr. E.B. Rogers III. So, you own the outstanding shares of Transmutation Inc., Mr. Twilliger, how much do you want for... Uh, he wants $10 a share. Mm, I see. It could easily go to 20 even higher. But Mr. Twilliger will be satisfied with a profit now. Well, I... The sky's the limit with a stock like this, Mr. Rogers. 30, 40, 50. There was a funny look in Mr. Rogers' eyes. I couldn't tell what it was. And then I realized it was the way he tilted his head, as if he were listening. And it seemed to me that I heard an adding machine. Was it my imagination? Or was he hearing it, too? Was he also one of Apple's people? Uh, Mr. Rogers, you, you hear something? Uh, clicking like an adding machine. Why should I hear that? It's the way he said it. I knew, I knew. Well, I took that 20 million and I bought everything I ever wanted, plus a lot of things I never even knew I wanted. I never heard the adding machine, so I figured it had to be my imagination. Until... One night, I got a call to come visit Mr. Rogers. Yes, Mr. Terrell, I had to see you. I'm dying. As to be expected, I'm old enough and overdue. But I want to answer the question you asked me in my office. Did I hear an adding machine? The answer is yes. And tonight, I hear it more loudly than ever. Well, what does it mean? Give him back the money. You still have time. What? We're giving it all up, Gussie. The 
coats, the houses, the cars, the clothes. Every cent. Oh, Stuyvesant, why? Why? You're the one who told me. I don't want to lose my soul, that's why. What are you talking about? Don't you remember what you told me about the adding machine and the job I'd have for all eternity? Oh, Dad. Yes, Dad. Stuyvesant, it was a joke. Oh, a joke? Well, sure, I made it up. I was afraid I'd lose you. I wanted you to stay with me in Rogersville and work in the diner. Oh, darling, how was I to know you were a financial genius, a wizard of Wall Street? So you made it up, huh? <laughs> Every word. But every word is the truth. Stuyvesant. And I'm giving it up. We ain't gonna have a penny. But we will have our souls. Hey, you... You are serious. All right, boys. What? Hey. Hey, what's the big idea? Before I could make a move, these two big gorillas in white coats grabbed me, hustled me into a wagon... And tossed me into a padded cell. Things got kind of blurry after that. I can only remember a bunch of guys with eyeglasses and beards. Oh, bones. It's light and bright and then clean. And you can play shuffleboard and dig in the garden. And I do. Sometimes I even wear my captain's uniform. All the doctors figure I'm as nutty as a fruitcake because I don't want to live like a guy with $20 million. But that's okay. Because here's what I don't hear. I don't hear that clickety, clickety, clackety, clack. I'll tell you who I think does hear it, though. Gussie. Sometimes the sounds you don't hear are more vital than the ones you do hear. Rest assured, the machine is always running, always adding, subtracting, and in the end, shall you have a debit or a credit? Well, I owe you one more appearance in just a short while. is keeping track of everything? Who is keeping the score? Who knows where every item belongs? And most important, who is balancing the books? Do you believe that every act is weighed and measured? That every account is balanced daily? If you don't, what's the alternative our cast included Norman Rose, Robert Dryden, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.